Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. You know, there are a lot of political movements that are afoot in this country that are really based on one of two things. Either A, how the person perceives reality, regardless of how attached or detached it may be from true reality. And the other movement, of course, is, is where our rights have to end, where somebody else's feelings begin. Now, I think that we in the 2A community have missed an opportunity to embrace that type of thinking for us as well, and I think it could serve us some advantages if we were able to do it. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is, is that we right now are in a time when it seems like many radical states are attempting to ban assault weapons, or what we like to call semi-automatic rifles, at a feverish pace right now, and basically thumbing their nose at the Supreme Court. But are they really banning assault weapons? What are they really banning? Well, with my help of my good friend Tom here at Security Gun Club, Washington's nicest indoor gun range, we've developed a little flow chart that I think will help you understand whether or not you own just a plain old firearm or one of those scary assault weapons. So today, let's spend a few minutes and talk about how can I tell if my firearm identifies as an assault weapon? Okay, so the issue we're talking about today is this handy dandy little flow chart that was put together by none other than Tom over here at Security Gun Club, the brains of the operation, who sat down, geeked out with a lot of laws for a lot of time and came together with this flow chart, which I'm gonna walk you through, which is gonna help you to understand, does your firearm identify itself as a regular firearm or as a scary assault weapon? Now, the, like I said, the inspiration for all of this was our good friend Tom here at Security Gun Club. I had a chance to talk to him about how he developed this and let's hear from Tom. Hey Tom, by the way, listen, great flow chart you came up with. What was the inspiration? How'd you end up coming up with this idea? Well, they just told me they didn't understand what the law was and they locked me in my office until I got it done. Okay. Already. Um, so listen, uh, like I said, he did develop a really, really good uh, flow chart. And what I want to do is kind of walk you through so that you can better understand, does my firearm identify as an assault weapon? Okay, so this is the chart we will use to find out whether or not your firearm identifies as an assault weapon. Now we're gonna start right over here in the top left where it shockingly says start here. And the first question we gotta ask ourselves is, is the firearm semi-automatic? Okay, so if it's a bolt action, pump action, lever action, brake action type firearm, unless the firearm is semi-automatic, it has no chance of being classified as an assault weapon under Washington's new law. So again, if it's anything but semi-automatic, we are already done with the inquiry. Now, if in fact the firearm is semi-automatic, we move on down here to the second section on the prohibited list. Now for the prohibited list, what you'll need to do is you will need to take a look at over here in section two, this very long, long list, and we've put it on a video here, and we'll put the list up for you right here so you can begin to take a look at it and familiarize yourself with all of the firearms that have been banned by make and manufacture. Now, if in fact your firearm is on the prohibited list, I'm sorry, you have now an assault weapon, and it is subject to the restrictions of this law. However, if your firearm is not on this list over here, okay, if it's not on this list, are you out of the woods yet? Well, unfortunately, that's not the case because the next thing we need to do is if you're not on the prohibited list, we're going to come down here and determine, do you have a pistol with a detachable magazine, okay? And this is a pistol as classified by the ATF. Now, if you do have a pistol that accepts a detachable magazine, then we have to take a look at does it have any one of the following components right over here, okay? Does it have a threaded barrel? Does it have a second hand grip? Does it have a shroud encircling the barrel? Or does it have a place where the detachable magazine is accepted in some place other than the grip? If the answer is yes to any one of those, I'm sorry you have an assault weapon. If the answer is no to all of those, you do not yet have an assault weapon. Now, 
Maybe it wasn't a pistol, but instead we're going to go down here and determine that, in fact, no, it was a shotgun. And you're like, well, shotguns can't be assault weapons. Well, yes, they can under Washington law now. Because if you have a semi-automatic shotgun and it has any one of the following here in this blue box, I'm sorry to tell you, but you have an assault weapon. So does it have a folding or telescoping stock? a pistol or forward grip, a thumb hole stock, a fixed magazine exceeding seven rounds, or a revolving cylinder? If the answer is yes to any one of those, and it's a semi-automatic shotgun, I'm sorry to inform you, but you now own an assault weapon. If it does not have any of these components listed in the blue box, any of the following, a semi-automatic shotgun is not an assault weapon. Now we come down here, maybe we actually have a rifle. Now a rifle, of course, is going to have a length of greater than 30 inches. If it is not a rifle at this point, and we've gone through all of the other types of firearms, congratulations, you do not own an assault weapon. But if it is a rifle, then we have to take a look, is the length greater than 30 inches? If the answer is no, that is that it is less than 30 inches, I'm sorry, you have an assault weapon. We also have to take a look as, is it a center-fired type of ammunition? If it is using center-fire ammunition, then we're going to continue on. However, if it is using rim-fire ammunition, you do not have an assault weapon. But if it does use center-fire ammunition, so that means we have a semi-automatic rifle, which has a length over 30 inches, using center-fire ammunition, does it then accept a detachable magazine? If the answer is no, and it's a fixed magazine exceeding 10 rounds, you have an assault weapon. But if it's a fixed magazine not exceeding 10 rounds, well, you do not have an assault weapon. But then we also have to take a look at, does it accept a detachable magazine? And if it does, does it have any one of the following here? Okay, so if it is a semi-automatic rifle with a length greater than 30 inches that's using center fire ammunition, which accepts a detachable magazine, and it has any one of the following, pistol grip, a thumb hole stock, a folding or telescoping stock, a forward pistol grip, a flash suppressor, guard or eliminator, a silencer or suppressor, a threaded barrel, a grenade launcher or a shroud over the barrel, then yes you have yourself an assault weapon. If some way you have a semi-automatic rifle with a length greater than 30 inches using center fire ammunition, which accepts a detachable magazine and does not have any one of those followings, congratulations, you do not own an assault weapon. And in case you're wondering about what do we mean when we talk about barrel shrouds, well, that definition is right here. Or the grip, what are we talking about with the grip? Well, that definition is right here. And then I know all of you have questions about the parts section, and candidly, we don't have an answer about that, but the actual applicable statute is down here in section four. Well, I certainly hope that that helps you better understand, does your firearm identify as a scary old assault weapon or a not so scary plain old regular firearm? For more information, you can actually look this flowchart up. It's right here at Security Gun Club's website. The link is right there. Check it out. You can see for yourself what this is all about. If you have any other questions about whether or not your firearm may identify as an assault weapon or not, or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington gun law by now. But if you don't, that's okay, because that information is right down there in the description box. In the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.